Good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight is the meeting of the Waterbury Select Board for Tuesday, September the 6th, 2022, in the Steel Community Room. Uh, here, and first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Any additions or amendments to the agenda? Um, I was wondering if uh, we, uh, I received a comment from a, um, a constituent about uh, traffic situation on Guptill, and uh, I was just wondering if uh, we might be able to get uh, arranged to have uh, our uh, Vermont State Police uh, contingent um, to attend uh, one of the upcoming meetings so we could address uh, that situation and others that have All the come before the board. Sure. Okay. Do you want to put that as an agenda item? Or I don't know if it needs to be an agenda item. I just wanted to no, get that just, out. Just if Karen can put it in the parking lot yeah. for a future meeting, we'll get it on. Yeah. yeah. Thank and, you. and hopefully within the next month, if possible. Duly noted, Roger. Any other changes to the agenda? Yes. Uh, Editors search on the agenda. No, nope, as we discussed, uh, we will be glad to add that to select board items that the manager searching. We'd be glad to have you give an update, Skip. Okay. And we'll have we'll have that first on the uh, select board. Items. Appreciate it, Mike. I have two things. Yes. One is to uh, um, ratify the new clerk treasurer's salary um, and then the second um, I'd like to just talk about the audit proposal for years 2022 to 2026 if you I think we can do it quickly tonight it just came today if you'd rather wait until a meeting in October that's okay too so well, I think that's reasonable does anyone have any objections on the board uh, we'll add that under select board items. Manager's items or select board items? Add it under manager's items. Manager's items? Yeah, okay. both of them. As okay. seat. Uh, I'll move to approve the agenda as amended. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There being no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. Now is the time on the agenda where we have uh, a period of time for people to make brief public comments, if, if, if they wish. Anyone wishes to make a public comment, if you could come forward, uh, say your name for the record, and uh, you have up to two minutes. Or we're a little flexible if it's a little close. <laughs> well, I'll try to be, uh, try to be brief. brief. Uh, Skip Flanders, uh, one of the e flood commissioners, and uh, I didn't know that I would get so involved in the housing in Waterbury, but it has crossed e flood's path with our uh, attempt to uh, find a use for 51 South Main Street uh, that we had proposed uh, with Down Street to look for a uh, public housing. Uh, project there out of the need in the town uh, plan. We held an informational meeting which was well attended, 50 people and uh, many spoke and things. And uh, what I kind of took away from that was I'm not sure how big the need for housing is in Waterbury in terms of uh, affecting employers, uh, finding staff and things. and. Uh, the e flight commissioners are meeting next week to uh, take up when we uh, have our vote and things, but um, my reason for coming here is to, well, I'd like to have more information about what the real need for housing is in Waterbury so that they would have that when the voters voted, but housing is more of a I see it as a select board issue rather than a water and sewer issue. Um, so I'm a little, you know, wondering what the select board thought about between now and then in terms of what information uh, 
you like to kind of maybe help or support or where we go from here. I know Alyssa had proposed a housing task force, which um, I guess hasn't gotten started. So, um, so that and I understand some people may not want to um, speak too much about real housing, whether we get the reputation that there's no housing in Waterbury, so employers don't want to come here. Um, but um, I know I've heard sort of bad stories about housing in the last month, how apartments have been sold and doubled the rent and you're evicting people. And I think it's a pretty tough situation out there from what I hear. And, um, these 25 units would certainly help that. Um, temporary housing stock, not necessarily who goes to live there. I was just here to get your thoughts or what? what Skip, what makes you think that uh, there is not a problem with housing? Well, if you listen to some of the people that didn't think it's pressing, why are we doing this now? Um, you know, maybe the Stanley Watson lot is going to come around in a couple years and why do we need to do this? And, you know, sort of. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I would even look at myself not needing to find an apartment. I don't know that I was really <laughs> in tune to how real the need is out there. Uh, not like some people that are, you know, having to search and can't find anything. You know, we've kind of looked online what the <coughs> vacancy rate is in Waterbury, which is pretty tough to calculate. but. I guess it's pretty low from what I hear that yeah. there aren't many opportunities. And, um, you know, we chose Down Street because they have a track record in Waterbury. They have a number of buildings that are well maintained. They just uh, renovated the Stimson Graves building for a million or two dollars. Uh, the slide they showed had a zero rate, zero vacancy rate in all their units. That expressed uh, satisfaction with what they did. So that's where we reached out to them. Bill had talked to them more than a year ago and things, and finally they, you know, I guess want to take an opportunity of the funding potential plus, you know, a real need here and things. So, Alyssa, do you want to comment? Because I know you've been involved with the housing task force. Apparently there's no volume, there's no sound on the Zoom. That's Try join. We'll see. Um, sure, so I can start. Um, thank you, Skip, for coming in. I guess I'll first just say in full disclosure for this board so they know I did present at that meeting. I was presenting as former planning commission chair because you know how much I love showing 16 slides about the town plan and why the town plan says that housing is a good idea. Um, but I also would say, too, to Skip, that I also want to just highlight that I think EFUD is a really important partner for housing. So I appreciate you coming here and wanting to talk with the select board. And also, if you look at the program for town fair that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns is hosting, they have a two-part series about why you need infrastructure to develop housing. So I just want to acknowledge that we said this before with the water presentation, but we're in a very different place to have a discussion about how we can support housing development, acknowledging that we have municipal water and sewer through EFUD. So that's just that. I guess to the piece around data, um, what I've shared with Skip is, you know, there's a variety of data. There's local data, there's countywide, there's statewide data. Um, and it's updated at varying frequencies and with varying degrees of accuracy. We in Vermont have small community sizes, so some of the town-specific data is a bit of a shot in the dark in terms of how much weight I personally you know, would give it. Um, I do feel like, at least personally, it's really important to just publicly state that I think we do have an enormous housing challenge in Waterbury and across the state and really across all types of housing. So um, not only the need for rental housing, but 
some of the terms are workforce housing, but homes for folks to buy, to rent, really across the spectrum. And you know, Bill spoke to this in the meeting, but they're all interrelated. Um, and just personally, if I lost my current rental housing situation, I am not confident I would be able to continue to live in Waterbury and serve on the soft board. And I have an enormous amount of privilege in terms of access to financial resources and friends in the community that many people might not, especially if they were looking to move here. Um, so again, that's one personal anecdote kind of um, with regards to the housing task force. So yes, the action we took um, at a press meeting in response to, I think, our concerns and um, also cited the housing study from RW um, was saying we should have a group. Um, I did meet with Steve and go over an outline of what that group looks like. Um, some of us have gotten feedback about um, who, who makes up different boards and committees, so we wanted to do it right. Um, I have not brought that back to this board to approve, though we certainly could, like at our next meeting, we were in the midst of other housing conversations, so didn't make the agenda tonight. Um, in terms of data, it is also, if you go to housingdata.org, which is run by the Vermont Housing Finance Authority, the, one of the first things they say a housing task force can do is figure out what the data is, you know, recognize that, you know, seven days has done the newspaper from Burlington, a like year long series on the housing crisis in Vermont. So there's all sorts of anecdotes on the state, but saying, all right, at a local level, you know, what are types of housing that might fill local needs or could be built based on zoning or whatever the things are. So that's often a work that a group like that does, but we haven't started that yet. Um, as for next week, I mean, Personally, I'm, I'm continuing to be happy to provide whatever data we have. I mean, we can get the data that does exist already um, on state and local levels and compile it. Um, to what extent that would help inform folks, I'm not sure, but. Um. Okay. Can I, I comment on this housing thing? Um, I wasn't able to make the meeting the other night, but um, if you read Front Porch Forum, there's not a week that goes by without someone desperately seeking housing for someone who wants to move here or a teacher who needs, you know, I mean, I think there's a huge need for housing statewide and locally. And amen, let's do 51 South Main and do Lad Hall when that property becomes available because we Listen. wanna keep our community vibrant and have people have a decent place to live. That's my two cents on housing. Thank you. Chris? Uh, there was an article there that I read the other day that talked about housing in Vermont. Uh, just in Burlington alone, the average single family home is now half a million dollars. Uh, Sixteen hundred dollar or uh, four hundred thousand dollar mortgage a year ago was sixteen hundred dollars. That same mortgage now is twenty four hundred dollars. Um, we have several uh, call them stakeholders. You know, people in this the, in this community that have recently built apartment housing. Joel Baker being one of them. Caleb Bainsworth being another one. Scott Lambs is working on a triplex down here. Those are the types of people that you might want to contact. Um, they could give you a good insight and uh, as to you know how quick if they're renting these things before they're even built, uh, you know that might give you some idea of, of the, uh, the desired need in the in the community. I spoke with uh, had a lengthy conversation with Tony Walton the other day about real estate issues uh, in this area. Um, Things are starting to subside as far as the shark frenzy over uh, house buying. Um, the inventory is starting to come up a little bit, uh, and and you know the amount of people seeking new homes or homes here in town uh, are starting to wane a little bit. Uh, I think as inflation continues to uh, ramp up. Um, it's going to get more and more difficult to provide these types of housing for you know people at the lower end of the spectrum. Um, speaking to one of the guy, the guy that bought my concrete business uh, years back, um, today he called me about a project we're doing, and 
he's so backed up with foundations. Um, he's booked into May already. He's got uh, piles and piles of, of jobs he needs to get to uh, that are already in the works, you know. So things are still booming on, even though interest rates are going up, those, that money and those projects were already in the pipeline. Uh, so I think we'll see what happens come spring of next year. Uh, fuel prices, watching the stock market program there today, they're anticipating uh, the Russian oil reserve, you know, uh, supplies are going to be cut off here just prior to winter. Uh, there's going to be huge shortages and, and the price is going to ramp back up again. So none of this is good for the housing market right now. Um, we're kind of a little bit, unfortunately, a little bit behind the eight ball uh, when it comes to trying to provide affordable housing. So that's my two cents. For what it's worth, but I think I think some local people, if you know guys like even Paul Arna, um, he's a developer. Um, those are the types of people that maybe we ought to be speaking to about what they're seeing on their end of it, uh, and the potential for for more housing or the, even the need for more. So. I'll just give a real brief comment. <clears throat> I've been in the housing world in Vermont for over four years. I was on a longtime supporter of Down Street. I was on their board for uh, six years. Uh, housing program director at USDA Rural Development. So housing is a problem statewide. There is no place. And Waterbury, if you look as several people have said, houses are hard to come by at a reasonable amount, and rentals are hard. You need someone, a, a working person like Alyssa, for example, like she's even said she may not be able to find. You know, those of us who own houses and probably haven't paid off, we're all sitting a little more comfortable, except for maybe our property taxes. But I think it's a problem, and I think the housing task force is the way for us to, you know, have that discussion and figure out strategies for what we're going to do in the future. We've been talking about it in the select board for several years. I know. Um. There's one other uh, topic that relates that's not really EFUD's responsibility as one of the spokesmen at the uh, meeting was concerned about parking and the loss of parking. And um, the trustees did a parking evaluation, I think, 2016 that, you know, how was the parking in uh, Waterbury? Um, that we had adequate parking if you looked around. Um, and that was before the bank parking got expanded and things. So um, we're thinking of, or I was going to propose that um, we perhaps have uh, that parking evaluation sort of updated to show whether or not, you know, 51 is not uh, a critical part of the parking need there. I, I think back then they showed that we were only at 68% in the bank. That didn't include the bank parking lot because it was private at the time. Now it's paid for parking and it's about, about doubled. And it wasn't, it didn't include 51 because we did that while Main Street was being constructed, never intending that it be used as a permanent parking lot and stuff. So um, I was going to talk with uh, EFUD on uh, next Wednesday when we meet, whether, uh, you know, we wanted to have, I think it was Stantec that did the parking study and everything, and uh, where they could look at that and make sure that 51 was not a critical part of the parking needs in Waterford. I think it said we were only about 68% of um, a critical level um, for what we had for the, the you know, downtown area there, so. Do you want to answer? I didn't know if their hand was up or. Well, I don't know that we need to get into parking right. policy and long-term planning, but I guess I would just say that in our 
here's irony, Skip, in our parking lot, we have parking ordinance. And I think as you're uh, uniquely aware, the former village trustees used to allocate the stack to however many high parking on the street. And I would just state with regards to 51 South Main Street, the sketch plan layout showed enough parking to meet what they were proposing to build in that building with no on-street parking. And so certainly I support data-driven decision-making. I would love to know what data you would like us to help support you getting before the 14th. And I also think at a certain point, some folks are not convinced by data. And I think that yeah. um, public sentiment is important and just moving things forward. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's looking to get stuff done by the 14th. That's only next week. So um, I agree with you, Alyssa. I think you know one of the challenges that EFUD has with this lot, um, and we saw it the last time EFUD talked about selling it to this guy by the name of Dan Johnson, and we right. saw a little bit last week. It was a great presentation last week. I think we answered a lot of questions. I think a lot of people were very happy with what they heard. The problem is, you know, this group of people, well, we can't support it unless we see what it's going to look like. Uh, this group of people, well, um, you know, it's not going to help anybody who you know, makes more than $60,000 a year, and therefore, you know, teachers and nurses and other kind of professional people, they're not going to be helped by it. Um, and everybody, all of the folks that oppose it, it seems like no matter what IFA does, there's going to be enough people that their questions aren't going to be answered, so we vote to just do nothing. And mm -hmm. it just sits there. And then, so is EFUD's only option to just put it out there and say, we'll sell it to the highest bidder? And then people are going to say, well, gee, we're not going to authorize the trustees to sell it to the highest bidder unless we know what's there. So it's this continual dog chasing its tail, and you never get the answers. So, I mean, I think a statement by the select board <coughs> and the EFUD commissioners that housing is a critical need in Waterbury, it's been identified by the Planning Commission. And, you know, if you want to try to get some additional information, I'm not sure the parking information is all that critical. I think anecdotally, there's doesn't seem to be a parking issue out there that I can see. But, uh, you know, I understand your concern, Skip, and I understand why you're a little bit frustrated, but I think that um, it's definitely the need of the hour from everything that we hear. I agree with what MK says. If you read Front Porch Forum, people are always looking at, at something, and uh, this organization has a good track record in, in Waterbury. As I said at that meeting, you know, some people say, well, it's a... It's, uh, you know, not-for-profit housing company. Let the private sector do it. And people like Joel Baker and Dalen Ainsworth and others are, you know, they're probably good folks. But I can, as the health officer, I get called to go into a lot of private places in this community, and you wouldn't want your worst enemy living in them. Mm. Thank you. Roger. Um, uh, I'll move uh, that the select board encourage EFUD to pursue uh, the housing uh, with Down Street uh, as proposed uh, with our full endorsement uh, based on available information about on uh, the housing issues in Waterbury. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that? If not? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Well, I appreciate your support. And Hang on one second there, because you're going to be up <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll save you the trip. Uh, I have just one point of order, Mike. Uh, I don't know if we approve the consent. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, thank, thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> I guess we'll have to go back. Um, the consent agenda. Agenda items are solely the minutes of the August 15, 2022 meeting. Thank you, Roger, for that. Do we have a motion? To approve? I'll move to approve. Second? Yep. Motion and a second. Uh, any, any discussion? If not, 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. With any further public comments? The only thing I do want to add is as a public comment, uh, uh, we got through the select board from uh, CV Fiber. Uh, it says, I'll read it. It's a very brief, dear town of Waterbury and select board. Thank you for your generous contribution to CV Fiber. Uh, it is through your collaboration and commitment that we will realize the dream of high speed fiber in our communities. With warmest gratitude, Janelle and the CV Fiber team, just to acknowledge that. Okay. Moving on, um, first first item on the uh, amended agenda was uh, Skip was going to give an update on the selection process. Um, yes, I worked on it most up to date with uh, uh, Abby Friedman. Abby Friedman there, um, and getting uh, things set for tomorrow. So at noontime, uh, twelve thirty, I think the. Uh, informal group of people selected to uh, interview the three candidates is uh, happened between one and three three thirty i think and uh, uh, in the meantime the candidates will be meeting with bill to ask questions anything they have and woody will be giving them a tour of the town and then they'll rotate around um, and uh, they'll be giving us their feedback later in the evening, beginning probably at 8 o'clock after our interviews. And the uh, select board and the E5 commissioners are going to be convening at, I think, 4.30 um, in the uh, saddle room at the library there. Um, and thanks to... Uh, conduct the interviews of the three candidates and then uh, following that then we'll get the feedback from the people who were on the uh, informal committee that met in the afternoon and uh, then when that's complete uh, you know we'll go into a discussion of the candidates and where we want to go from there so it could be a long evening for us uh, tomorrow. Uh, I think. So, Abby Friedman of the League of Cities and Towns is filling in for Rick McGinley, who's um, on, on vacation there. I think. So, um, and Bill has volunteered or offered to meet with them as a part of the rotation of the candidates in the afternoon. Bill Woodruff is going to give them a tour of the town and things, and then they'll ro rotate around with the questions. So hopefully each, all of you, I think, have your questions uh, put in, and then Abby uh, Greenman is going through and will be assigned a questions to ask mm -hmm. uh, things. Um, I think all of the select board can make it. Um, Cindy Parks is not going to be able to make it of the EFUT commissioners. And Maroney is going to be joining us as far as I know. So, so it could be a long evening. Any questions of the board? Who's going to be uh, facilitating the discussion? Will that be you or Abby? Abby. Abby. Um, you know, and you'll be getting, I don't know whether tonight or tomorrow a list with your name as a sign you know for the question and, okay uh, go around with it. we usually have a list of you know this person goes first second third you yeah know, it's good to have so a lineup, lineup. Yeah, right yeah. it'll, it'll yeah. be a lineup it's it's baseball or meeting or whatever the first meeting went pretty well <laughs> hopefully i yeah. think in the beginning they're going to be uh, given five minutes to respond to the question uh, that they were all to answer and you all should have gotten their response in writing and they'll be given five minutes to what they want to say about their response to that question. So, mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, thanks for distributing that, Scott. So, <clears throat> and when it's over, hopefully I'll have more free time than I have <laughs> spending on this for. And just on behalf of the board, thank you for chairing that that committee. It was really helpful. I I knew. I, I definitely wanted to be a full participant, but I was always scared with a 97-year-old and a 102-year-old that you know things could go bad. So your participation has been unbelievable working with Rick and both Abby, and it's the process I think has went well. Well, I'll put in a plug for the League of Cities and Towns because I don't see how any community could have handled the process on our own that we just don't have to or I don't have the time to spend on it to do the things that they have done to help us along in the process and things. I said the same thing. I was talking with my wife on the drive back north, and she, I said, if we had to do this whole thing ourselves, boy, it would have been an astronomical process. And maybe for real small communities, they're able to do that. But, you know, a community our size, it's, it's a very, you know, you need some sort of a, you know, a steward to guide you through the process. Yes. So you don't fall into the failure traps of other people and things. So. Right. Chris. So maybe it went over my head, but uh, the questions that the select board each, the three questions that each select board member posed to the candidates, how does that fit into this process? They'll be on the list that different people will be assigned. I, they didn't all make it. It's kind of a range of questions. And like if, you know, I had a question similar to something like that or something that those, you know, they get to ask one cash, uh, one question in that category. So it, it covers a sort of range of uh, things that people pick out. Yeah. You all got the list to pick your questions from there. You can write your own if you want. You'll get at the beginning of the session a list of who goes where, you know, it, it's not going to be haphazard, it'll be, it'll be organized, you know, you know, Chris or and then, then Alyssa may go, you know, Abby will have, you know, a set schedule of people asking questions. And just to reiterate the answer to Chris's question is we all submitted questions, VLCT staff helped consolidate and they'll right. help distribute them back out. For, you know. Sounds good. So one piece of housekeeping information and I, I just kind of thought about this over the weekend and it's probably just me being a little bit uh, anal about it but um, the boards will need to decide I mean we talked about having the person start on November 1st you can only have one town manager so is the new person going to be the special assistant to the town manager for two months <laughs> or is the person going to be the town manager on November 1st and I'll be the special assistant. I don't really care, but you can't appoint that person as town manager on November 1st and also have me as town manager on November 1st. So just think about that a little bit. Yeah, that's, a good point. that's a good point. I would think that that person would likely be more the special assistant going forward because, you know, he's training kind of under yeah. you. That, that, that's, that that's, just seems to, that in my, my lexicon seems to make a lot of sense, yeah. and then when you leave, he, he would take over that. Right, role. and it's just a small housekeeping yeah, thing, housekeeping. but I want you to make sure you do it, <laughs> whatever way you're going to do it. We will, though. Thanks. Any other questions? To remind you all, it's set for um, the two boards is 425 in the sal room at the library um, beginning at, like I said, 425. This room was occupied with, uh, I think yeah, it's the, the DRB, yeah. and they already scheduled uh, yeah. people here. It's so, legal notice. Um, we're down in the room at the uh, library uh, there. It's the big room kind of toward the parking lot there. Skip, one question that I had. If we get to the end of the process and there's no clear choice, you know, whether I'm not saying there's no choice or, you know, it could be where we say none of the three candidates we would like, unlikely, but it, there might be a possibility that we might not come to consensus that night. Then you don't go home. 
Well, I'm thinking we will, but what would, what, what would be the process if we didn't come to consensus that evening? Well, I, I've never been through it before, but in talking with Abby a little bit, um, you may narrow it down to two candidates, you know, that okay. we don't agree on one, but you can agree on two, and you can have a second or third round of process that okay. you want to do something between the uh, two other enemies or you know, uh, more written uh, description or... Um, it's, it's unlikely, but it could happen. Yeah. Let's stay cautiously optimistic and cross that yes. bridge when we come to exactly. it. Exactly. So, if there are no further questions, we'll... So we'll see you tomorrow, 425 at the South. We'll be uh, and also there's... Uh, we're doing the uh, sort of informal... Well, they're not informal, but the interviews with the uh, committee that we appointed there are beginning at 12.30. So I, I think, Chris, are you planning to attend that? And Lefty's planning to attend, and I don't know what the year. No, I said, you know, I asked if Chris was going to attend, I would beg out. Okay. But, um, well, you could, we thought up to three people could, uh, you know, sit in on that. You wouldn't be asking questions, but you've been listening to the whole process and, and things. Abby will be sort of running the meeting and things, and then those people are going to be calling back in by way of Zoom beginning at 8 o'clock um, tomorrow night, one at a time. So and then after we get all their feedback, then we would begin talking about the uh, candidates and pros and cons of what you do. So okay. Thank look you. forward to it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. Okay. Next item, electrical box art design. MK, come on up. Hello. How'd you like the first one? Love it. Do you hear me yell out my window? Nicely done. Thank you. Um, so we have a new group of kids. These are freshmen at Harwood. Um, and they worked with Julio last week. They had a lot of different ideas than the younger kids. Um, but it's mostly landscape with some town buildings with a person on a corner of the box, sort of community storytelling of maybe future past. I don't know. It's hard to describe. It'll be a landscape-ish thing. <laughs> but if you trust me, I think it'll be nice. I didn't get to see enough on the box on the corner. Yeah, I didn't. Can I pull oh, the roundabout on, just to show it? Yeah. Yeah, it was in the paper. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, four different seasons. Uh, each side has a different uh, season. So one is uh, fall, summer. Uh, winter, spring, winter, spring. Yep. summer faces Main Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it's different colors, but it's also got that trend. Is that thinking? Summer can stay no. forever. <laughs> summer is well, still It's another community. Thank you. Yep. I was in there. And then it's also got the uh, train motif. From, right. Uh, While we're in a little pause, if Brian F. and TCL A3, if you could identify yourselves for the, for the record. You come off mute. I'm Brian Farnsworth. OK. okay. And TCL A3. Yeah. you send something to them in the chat? I don't have chat. Don't know chat? No, we just say what it or something. Well, I would. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would say, say if they're not going to identify themselves, the if they don't want to identify themselves, I would say put them in the waiting room. That's your call. I, I would make this, is the rest of the board in agreement to put TC? 
TCL A3 in the in the waiting room because they won't identify themselves. Yeah. Well, why in the waiting room? How are they going to identify themselves from there? Well, how else would you recommend? Yeah. I would if they're not know. being obtrusive, this is a publicly recorded yeah, right. meeting, so see. they and the rest of the public are entitled to see it. We can reflect yeah. them in the minutes as TCLA3, but obviously we won't take public comment unless they identify themselves. If they're mm -hmm. disruptive, like any other disruptive yeah. person, we're allowed to maintain yeah, I mean, order. We have other members of the public here that haven't uh, identify themselves, so I'm not sure that that's required. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I think it's mostly if it's problematic. That's why I get wary on Zoom. But if they're sitting there muted, it seems yeah. fine to me. Okay. Okay. So my question is, can we paint the next electrical box? <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Okay. Sure. I'll move that uh, we give P uh, MK and uh, her team uh, authority to paint the next electrical box. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Is there any reason? Okay, so you've already explained yep. more or less what it's going to be about. Landscape. Landscape. Yeah. Landscape with maybe a town. town. Vermont oriented. Vermont, Vermont. yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. No, based on the first one, I'd say absolutely. Okay. Let's go for it. With no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Nice job. And I think we should just read for the record the first uh, sentence of the article in the roundabout quote, in what was the quickest improvement to Main Street in four years. <laughs> <laughs> so props to the group yeah, for doing it and for doing it. Have a good night. Before we go to Main Street I just I passed around the way to work the next day. It was quite funny. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda is closure of Randall Street for Halloween. So Jeff Smith, who lives on Randall Street, uh, is involved in Halloween activities, as many folks on Randall Street are. He reached out last week, and uh, given that uh, if we don't do something, he'll reach out again next week and the week after. So <laughs> I mean. Um, Randall Street is, as you know, uh, high volume. It's the place to go in Waterbury for Halloween for trick-or-treating. So uh, we have typically closed Randall Street, uh, about half of Elm Street, I guess, just beyond the municipal parking lot. We closed there um, from 4 to 8 on Halloween. And it's a town street now. Not The village doesn't have anything to do with it anymore. So. I would uh, recommend the select board authorize the closure of Randall Street from 4 to 8 on Halloween. Thanks, Bill. I'm going to authorize the closure as outlined. Thank you. Second? I'll second it. We have a motion to a second. Any further discussion on the closure? Do we or anyone need like sheriffs or anything? I mean, I know when we had, but we're, we're fine. We'll just close it with signs, call it a day. Great. Yeah. Am I dreaming, Bill? Have we not done this before, of official closure of Randall Street? Maybe I'm just because it just goes fast that we You've have done them. it before. Okay. That's been closed the past five years at least. Yeah, no, I know it's always been closed, but I, I just can't remember it being in a select board. Yeah. Yeah, I believe we have brought it to the select yeah, board. Yeah, probably has. It's just, it's just minor item. Um, point of information, does anyone take candy donations for the people who live on Randall Street? Yeah. We all is do. It, is we it all usually? Do. I know, but do they? Where would one consolidate those, or do you just leave um, Rogers staff? The past several years, Jeremy Ayers has been coordinating that. Um, I think he puts something out on Front Porch Forum. Right. And he also has a Facebook page, and uh, I believe the uh, uh, Brookside Elementary. Yeah, and Crossing. There's and, collection boxes at Brookside and Crossing. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. For us, non-school. Adjacent yes. yeah, I'm just you. on the receiving end of that. <laughs> What's your costume going to be, Roger? That's a good one, but <laughs> that, that is a dark <laughs> secret. <laughs> I know there's some residents that get pretty involved. Oh, yeah. At least they used to. Yeah. Still, no, I, still do. I get involved on the other side. I uh, like to uh, just guess what each kid is dressed up as. So I've been getting better. I'm not, I'm not 100%. <laughs> 
as we get older, we don't know a lot That's of right. new <laughs> superheroes. <laughs> uh, that is the challenge. Okay. Moving forward, we uh, next. Did we vote on that? Yeah, they didn't. You, you can bring it to a vote. Oh, I thought we did. Okay. Motion, First move, second. 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 Then, if there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item parking plan update. All this uh, planning. Not parking, parks. Park, parks planning update. I probably have parking from the previous discussion. That's Alyssa's. So as everyone knows, I leap at every chance to talk about planning, but also as the select board's <laughs> representative to the Hope Davy and Ice Center Area Parks Planning Study, say that five times fast, quick update. Um, I will just say the steering committee and members of the public met with the consultants from SE Group on August 26th in the pouring rain and thunderstorm at Hope TV in the mm -hmm. morning yes, to I do know. a site walk, but it was really great. We had a nice range of, again, folks involved on the steering committee, people who play disc golf with their kids, people focused on equestrian, people focused on conservation, equestrian, equestrian access through the back. Um, so again, a nice range, and it was really just an opportunity for the consultants to hear from folks on the property. Um, We'll get to the next other opportunity for that, um, but also there was um, a wetlands delineation consultant and an arborist, so they were there as well. So that happened. Um, but the important thing is that I would like to invite everyone to the public visioning workshop and open house in this room, so it's in the Steel Community Room, um, Thursday, September 15th from 5 to 7. That is a change of location, so mostly I just wanted to highlight this is on the homepage of our municipal website. It's from five to seven, it's drop in, so you can come for a half hour and then leave to go to the RW Business Mixer or whatever else you would like to do with your evening. Um, there also will be an online survey um, because it's drop in, it's not a formal presentation where we would like record it on Zoom, but there will be an online survey option posted on the town website. So if for some reason you can't come in person but you wanna provide feedback, you can do that. Here's the beautiful poster, which is going at the post offices here and anyone can take one. And happy to answer any questions, but that's all I have um, for now. Originally this was gonna be up at Hope Davy. Correct. And you decided to make it here. Due to both accessibility and the fact that darkness at 7 p.m. in outdoor settings at this time of year gets less and less productive. Good point. The, the site walk was, in spite of the rain, was really interesting. I never realized how close some of the disc golf was to some of the houses, but as I kind of asked the question, you know, all the houses post-dated the, uh, <laughs> the disc golf course, so it's Talking kind about of- Talking farm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are there are definitely some conflicts. There was also some in, in, interesting things that we discussed down at the, um, by the ICE Center. You know, one of the, I guess, real issues there were parking as, I guess parking's kind of a theme tonight. That was a big issue on how to keep on creating. If you created uh, a new skate park down at the center, I it's going to be all the way down by the stump dump, right? Right. That's where they're kind of looking and how they were going to configure that. You know, the consultants are going to look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, they want to make, I had this crazy idea. I said, you want to really think out of the box, they should make a uh, luge rink in the winter and a, and a ice, ice uh, water park in the summer. But that's really thinking creatively. But I don't so think So bring that, your ideas right. to the bring, public well, visioning forum on Thursday the 15th at seven, five to seven. Yeah. But it was a very interesting site walk. You know, it really highlighted a lot of the issues and I think the people involved did an excellent job, you know, you know, giving giving the tour. I think the pe the people from the this golf community were very respectful. I think the, some of the local residents were very, I was a little concerned that, that was, there was gonna be a little bit of a mix up there, but that never seemed to happen. And okay. so I think, as I said, I think the public visioning workshop is gonna be a real 
you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be where the rubber heat meets the road. Kind of. The better the input, the better the plan will be, and then we will have a plan informed by a lot of public input to make decisions moving exactly. forward. So please share your input in person or on the search. It's your parks. Make you make use best use of them. Cool. Any other questions? If not, we'll move on to the next uh, item. Uh, signing uh, certificates to appoint the town clerk and treasurer. Do I do this or do you do this? <laughs> You do it. Uh, I think it's really straightforward. There's five spots for five signatures. Okay, well, I think it just requires our signatures. If not, we'll move on to manager's items. Uh, letter of support for Capital Region, Capital Region Communication Systems Project. Yeah, so um, at an upcoming meeting, we'll have somebody here from Capital West to talk about this capital region's communication system. Uh, the long and short of it is the, uh, you've probably read or heard that the state police uh, do not want to be in the dispatching business for municipalities, uh, fire departments, ambulances, uh, et cetera, any longer going forward. And uh, this is a long process by which uh, the state police will wean themselves away from that. Now, the state police don't do any dispatching for us anymore. When the village police department existed, the state police did dispatch the village police. But now the village police are gone, the state police dispatches their own police officers, of which we have a contract to uh, provide service here. But Capital uh, West, Capital Region Communication, dispatches WASI and they dispatch our fire departments, our fire department. <clears throat> and, um, but there are little towns in our region that the state police does some dispatching for both fire and ambulance. So that's going to be moving uh, off. And before the state police does that to all of their municipal dispatch clients, if you will, um, the various regions have to uh, ramp up their communication system so that it's uh, seamless and nobody goes without. <clears throat> um, the chief of Barry City, I believe it is, is involved with Capital West. And there's a grant that uh, this organization has applied for, looks pretty certain they're gonna get it. But what the state said when, when they were lobbied for the grant was, um, we'll help you get the new system set up because we're dispatching now and we don't wanna dispatch anymore. So we'll help provide some money to set up the new communication system, but the regions have to have a plan in place to maintain and then replace this system when the system goes down. So um, this letter of support that frankly I have already signed because they bugged me and bugged me and Gary and I, I signed it and I put an asterisk here and I said subject to approval by the select board on the 6th of uh, September. Uh, the grant application had to go in last week, so it went in with my signature on it. Uh, if the select board doesn't want to do it, then I'll withdraw it. But all this is basically saying now is, whereas the town of Waterbury currently uses the city of Montpelier and city of Barrie to provide emergency dispatch, those two dispatching departments in Barrie City and in Montpelier, those two city departments, they provide, there's a contract that they do the dispatching for Capital West. Whereas the town is aware that communications needs assessment was recently performed, which recommended certain enha enhancements to dispatch capabilities and emergency radio systems. Whereas the town of Waterbury recognizes that the ability for dispatch facilities in the cities of Barrie and Montpelier to provide backup dispatch service for each other will greatly improve and the redundancy and reliability will be improved of providing public safety dispatching and communication services to each facility in the capital region. 
Therefore, the Town of Waterbury expresses its support for the application to the State of Vermont for dispatch and radio enhancement funding. Furthermore, this funding will support necessary emergency service communications via the Capital Region Communication System project for many years to come. So I would recommend that you make a motion to authorize this to go in. It's already gone in um, with the caveat that I talked about. And then probably in October, I would hope that somebody from Capital West will come here and describe what the plan is going to be going forward and how much it will cost. And there will, there will be a cost. We already pay, <clears throat> we already pay um, for dispatching. Um, we pay right now. Yeah, um, dispatching fire department. We're paying uh, $86,600 right now, uh, and that is for our dispatching, and we pay for the dispatching for WASI. WASI reduces our direct assessment or uh, appropriation to them to reflect the fact that we are providing them a building right now and providing this dispatching. So it's all factored in. But going forward, um, that 86000 is to just pay the costs for dispatching. Uh, it's going to go up from there. There's going to be an additional cost to uh, pay into a fund that will help to maintain and replace that system going forward. So anyway, that's it for now. Uh, you're not committing to anything right now except agreeing support. to ask for the funding to support that uh, facility, so. Yeah, Roger. I move that uh, the select board authorize the letter of support that Bill just uh, read uh, to us uh, in support of the Capital Region Communication System project. <coughs> Motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Discussion? Upon uh, the securing of this grant, it ends up happening and moving forward to the process, I'm, I'm assuming that there will be budgetary numbers relating to the maintenance part of it and yeah. ongoing future costs. Yeah. The two-part question, though I'm very supportive, but I don't know if we have any choice. I don't think we could be without dispatching, so it's kind of a, almost a moot point that we need the dispatching. And two, how does the like, Central Vermont, I, I know I missed the last meeting, but the Central Vermont State Police Advisory Board, the 18 towns, have they, are they all, I assume they're part of this, and yeah, have so they commented on that? Most of the 18, most of the towns that are in the, that are members of this uh, State Police Advisory Commission, most of those towns are included in Capital West. They're already paying okay. for the dispatching services to a degree. Uh, a few of the small ones might be dispatched by the state, and they might be getting it for free right now. Right. Um, so yeah, they're all they're all on board. Um, their st capital west is starting to go around to the different towns to explain just the answer to the question that you had. That you know we're gonna if this grant comes to fruition, we're gonna get all this equipment. And when I believe it was, um, they were asked to show how they could have a system in place that would have a million dollars available after 10 years in order to replace if they, if they needed to. And to me, I think that's, um, that's more than it will cost in 10 years, or maybe the life will go out more than 10 years, but they've got, they're, they're trying to look at this from all angles. You know, it's, it's a, I'm not gonna debate anybody and say it's not a lot of money, but if we had to provide 24 hour a day dispatching yeah. 365 <laughs> days a year, it'd cost us a half a million dollars. Yeah. You know? So no, it's, not, it's, pretty, it's a pretty good deal.
Mm -hmm. We have Bur Brian's out in, on Zoom has a question, his hands up. No, that's my Oh, question. nope, that's your question. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Bill, did the state police ever give you a reason why they were looking to divide, divest themselves from this dispatching? Well, they didn't give me a reason, but I believe the reason that they wanted to divest themselves from this is that they've got enough to do on their own. That, uh, and there's, there's issues of fairness, you know. It's, we used to face that when, when the village was dispatched. You know, when I first came here, we had, well, Mary Dow was the dispatcher from 8 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. And then when she went home, the state police took it from 5 to, you know, 8 in the morning. And, um, you know, I'd go to manager's meetings and the city manager of Montpelier would say, how come you get 16 hours a day free from the state police? We don't get that from the state police, you know? So mm -hmm. anyway, it's, it's um, I think that uh, it's just, they feel the time has come to kind of cut that cord. Okay, any further questions or comments? If not. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. Financial reports. Bill. All right. Um, we can spend as little or as much time on this as you want. That's the highway and general fund. I apologize for the font size. It's pretty small on the general fund in the library, the uh, capital funds are a little bit easier to read. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do a budget for the library this time around. I just kind of ran out of time. I'm just gonna hit the high points. Um, uh, I don't know, is there one for Lisa? If no, she sure. wants. There's one each. And there's somebody else back there too, Karen, if they want one. I'll just wait for everybody to get what they're looking for. So start with the general fund. Um, the general fund and the highway fund, which is the one with the small font with the yellow, green, and blue on the first page. On the revenue side of things, um, you'll see that uh, we budgeted um, $4,067,000 of revenue down at the bottom of the page. And if you look over the projected column, it's 3,353. That looks like it's way down, and people might want to say, why is that way down? The big deal there is that because of um, EFUD's decision not to transfer the UDAG fund to you, uh, the town isn't going to transfer $600,000 to EFUD. Therefore, in the bottom miscellaneous um, budget there, you see that $600,000 transfer in ARPA funds. Um, if you look over in the right-hand column, that's not going to happen. I did increase the budget for the uh, ARPA lost revenue line. That includes the $100,000 going to uh, the ICE Center. And I said, well, there's no place else to put the $50,000 that you agreed to give to CB Fiber. So that's in that line. Um, the things that are highlighted in yellow and green in the service fee uh, section uh, looks like the town clerk's fees are going to be down. Uh, I suspect the major reason why that's down is that nobody's refinancing mortgages anymore because interest rates are going up. You know, there's still activity of transfers and marriage licenses and all that kind of stuff. But um, the past several years, we've had a lot of refinancing because interest rates were so low and that's just not happening now. Um, the number down, is going to be down from the historical society because they used to have uh, two positions and one position hasn't been filled since early in the year. So that will be 
offset by a reduction in expenses as well. The swimming pool income, um, we budgeted 50, we took in 45, 632. Um, normally at this point in time, I would suggest that we'd probably make up the difference with our fall swim lessons, but the combination of COVID staffing issues, uh, Nick having left, um, Wyatt just coming in, I'm not sure we're gonna have any swim lessons that we t we the last several years nick put into place a, a system where we worked with um, either first and fitness in montpelier or uh, i think it was the golden eagle in stowe to rent those facilities to provide uh, swim lessons in the in the cold weather months i don't think we're going to have that at least this fall uh, i imagine wyatt We'll think about that for next year. <clears throat> uh, the rec program revenues and the mini camp revenues, uh, I think there's a little bit of cross pollination there. Uh, if you add the two together, you know, we're looking at $181,000 about between recreation revenues and mini camp revenues that were budgeted. And if you look at what we've received, we're a little over 200,000. Um, so we're not too far off on that, and it's just a matter of where those uh, programs, uh, where they choose to, to put that revenue. So there's nothing there uh, that's a miss. The planning fees, uh, right now, if you divided 20374 by eight months and then multiplied it by 12 months, it would be close to 30000 I ratcheted that down to an estimate of 25,560 just because typically in the fall uh, as winter approaches, you know, you get less and less permits, but it, it looks like we will at least get our budgeted amount there. And then the blue uh, at the bottom from tax stabilization fund, we have uh, budgeted $50,000. That's what and we'll talk about that as we get closer to the end of the year, but for Roger and Alyssa's benefit, we used to have a fairly complex formula as to uh, how to determine how much money from the tax stabilization fund that we could transfer. But now that the tax stabilization fund has a fund balance over a million dollars, what we've pretty typically said now, and the voters approved this about three years ago, is that we could uh, transfer in any given year, 5% of the value. So $50,000 is 5% of a million. And, uh, you know, if the, if the fund lost uh, 10 or 15%, you could still transfer that 5% and not have it really negatively impact the fund. So it's in blue because uh, if, if we don't have to transfer it, even though we said that we will transfer it. If we end up in revenues or ahead of expenses and we decide not to transfer, we, we, we can make that choice. It's not mandatory that we transfer it. Um, I think there's something to be said maybe this year going into this budget season that even if we look at the budget now and the transfer isn't necessary, uh, you know, maybe we want to build the fund balance up a little bit to try to uh, make a buffer for taxes next year because it's a little bit unknown. But we'll make that decision as we get toward the end of the year. So that's it on the revenues. If you turn over the page, um, it's double-sided. We start the expenses there. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna go through this line item by line item, but the 310 on the regular pay, um, when, when I put the budget together in 2022, back in January, um, you know, I was proposing that Nick was going to work as um, recreation director, the, the director of recreation and um, community, community services. services. And some of his pay was going to be in the uh, recreation line and some of his pay was going to be in the general government line. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he's, he's left 
So we're probably not going to spend all of that, uh, all of that money. Um, I did factor in the wild card is going to be how much you choose to pay the new municipal manager for, for two months. That's the line it will come out of. I think I estimated that it was going to be a $100,000 salary, which is, on the, I think that's below your, your starting level or, or quite close anyway for 11 weeks. Um, but you, you're going to have enough uh, play there, so you won't have to worry about it. The clerk's line is blue. It looks like we're going to go over a little bit. Uh, Carla, while she has retired, uh, she still has some vacation time coming to her, and she's continuing to get paid for a few more weeks. And then, you know, Karen is now the town clerk, so uh, there's a little bit of uh, might be additional pay there that I wasn't banking on because when I did the calculation, I just figured Carla was. Well, she hadn't really announced to anybody except me, so I was just kind of taking a shot in the dark that because she hadn't told us when she was going to go out. Um, so anyway, there's nothing more on that page. Uh, the third page, fire department. Um, the building maintenance line looks like it's going to be way over budget, but it's not quite as bad as it seems. Uh, it is above what we budgeted, but they pay a, uh, an annual fee to Honeywell in January, which represents about half of the $30,000 for uh, mechanical uh, service that they provide there in that building. So that was paid early in the year. Um, it is going to go over more than it is right now, but it, it's not going to be um, uh, terribly over. So that's for both buildings, correct? Yep, okay. yep. This everything in here is for two stations and all of the all of the people. Uh, the insurance and liability, um, property and liability insurance, um, the fifteen fifty five is paid uh, quarterly. Um, we did have one accident with the fire truck side swiped a, a passenger car. It was our fault, so there was an insurance claim. The town has a $5,000 deductible, um, so that claim was about $6,700, $6,800. We had to pay 5000 of it, so I just I goes on that insurance line. Um, 5000 might sound like a high deductible, and. Certainly for most people, for their passenger cars, it's a lot higher than people carry. But, you know, we're a municipality. Um, we get, a, uh, because we take a higher deductible, our premiums are significantly lower. We've had a bad year this year when it comes to deductibles. Uh, we had this one, I think we've had two in the highway department, so we probably paid $15,000 in deductibles. But over time, I, I look at, uh, the choices that we can make, and that $5,000 deductible has paid. You know, it's uh, we're we're still paying less over time than we would otherwise. Uh, the new equipment line, uh, pretty typically, Gary waits until very late in the year before he buys the equipment. Uh, so we fund the new equipment line this year. Most of what we buy in any given year is really going to be put in into service at the end of the year and in the next year. And he just waits because it's one line that there's a little bit of a buffer. So um, if we found that we were going to be way over budget for some reason, we could pull back in on that line a little bit. Um, Turning over the page in the rec programs, um, the right now, Michelle, uh, I, I didn't tell her. So we hired Wired O'Brien as the program coordinator for uh, the budget for this year is $24,000. He started in August. You can see that nothing has been paid there, but you see the summer recreation, the summer program pay is way over budget. Some of that money that in that 132, 473 belongs on the $24,000 line. So, um, uh, but also remember, 
that record, you know, even if you took 24000 out of that and, and why it hasn't earned $24,000 yet this year, we're going to be way over on that line. But if you remember the revenue lines at the beginning of the year, we've taken in significantly more revenue. So I think uh, it's going to be okay. The recreation director line down at the bottom of the page in blue, uh, again, um, some of that 51224 which has been paid to Nick through August, um, should have been going into the, into the general government pay line because it was supposed to be for that community, yeah. you know, what he was doing for community services, but he never did anything there, so I'm just going to pay everything out of the rec, out of the rec line. Um, there's really nothing else of significance to talk about. If you turn over to the back of the, the last page in the general government, um, uh, we budgeted 4140 uh, My projections right now are a little less than $3.5 And the big difference there, again, if you added that $600,000 in, you'd be right on target. So I think we're in pretty good shape when it comes to the uh, um, general fund budget. Um, highway fund is next. Um, and there's really not a lot to say here. The things that are above, uh, well above cost, all have to do are related with fuel. So the propane line, uh, we're already pretty close to uh, what we budgeted for the year. It looks like we're going to spend about 15,000 um, gas and diesel fuel are both uh, just about spent for the year, and we're going to go over there. Um, right now, as you know, fuel prices have come down about a dollar from their highs, but we're going into the time of year where you know, heating fuel is going to maybe start going the other direction. What happens with Russia and Ukraine? You know, uh, we're just at the mercy of the market like everybody else is. Uh, and we'll, we'll pay attention to that. Um, the emergency road repairs, we talked about that earlier. Um, and we actually spent more on stone than we needed to for actually putting on the roads. This when Celia was sick. Randy was uh, kind of running things, and uh, did we stop? Uh, there was a little bit of miscommunication, so we have we have some of that stone still available to okay. us. Yeah. Bill, I'm sorry. Can you the ninety five thousand up the top transfer from Arba? I know you've answered it before, yep. but is it in blue because that's another scenario where we could hypothetically not? Yeah. Or is yes. So I. I budgeted the 95000 from ARPA at the beginning of the year as lost revenue because we needed it to balance the budget. But I said at the time, if, if we get through the year and we don't need to transfer that money and just leave it to appropriate for something else, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do. And, you know, we can... We can look at the budget holistically at that point. You know, if we end up with, uh, if we didn't transfer that money right now, we're looks like we're projecting a little bit over on the expenses. We budgeted 1959, and we're already at we're looking at 1990. So we're about thirty thousand dollars over right now, which is that emergency road repair line. Um, so in order to balance the highway fund, we'd need that $95,000. But if the budget as a whole uh, is, uh, you know, has uh, excess of revenues over expenditures, you can choose to, to withhold that if you, if you want to. Uh, but again, there's, there's nothing out of the ordinary that I can see here. Any questions about the general fund or the highway fund? No, I suspect, to your point there about the fuel, I suspect we might eat into that 95 really well. Yeah, we might need it, Chris. Um, 
you know, I, I, if you look at the projection for diesel fuel, um, it's about $30,000 that we've already spent. I'm hopeful that's, uh, that's a high estimate, you know, mm -hmm. to spend $30,000 when in the first eight months of the year, which, where most of our winter is, you know, January, February, March, part of April is winter. In the, in the rest of this year, in a typical year, winter starts November 15th. We have six weeks of winter, and that's when we use most of our fuel. So I'm hoping these projections are high, and it's taken into consideration what might happen to the prices, but we'll just have no, to see. Diesel hasn't really come down like gas has. Right. So. Diesel is still up there pretty good. But again, to, to expect that you know we've spent five-eighths of what we're going to spend right now, yeah, uh, I'm hoping that I've projected conservatively. We'll it's, find out. It's, the fuel prices definitely have an impact. My lock truck driver called me today, and uh, we were talking about different issues today to that business, and he's, he's so close short of firewood right now that he needs to supply to his his uh, homeowners, you know, people looking for firewood. Huh. Um, Why is that? Just because it's not available. It's it's being gobbled up so fast that uh, huh. they're paying $115 a cord now, and that's unheard of for for wood on the landing. Uh, hardwood pulp yeah. has gone to $100 a cord, and that's unheard of. It's usually around $65 a cord because the Firewood market is stealing so much from oh, really? the pulp wood. From huh. the pulp market, the pulp prices have had to come uh, uh, to try to be more competitive. And, uh, um, so yeah. people are really starting it's a to challenge. Your firewood prices are going through the roof. Hmm. Thank God, this hmm. glad I got mine in. <laughs> our state government didn't uh, follow through with that uh, commission there that was going to axe all forms of fossil fuel there, including firewood oh. uh, from from the state of Vermont. Anybody that you, you weren't going to be allowed, you're going to have to change everything over to alternatives. You weren't going to be able to burn diesel, propane, firewood, any of that. Oh, and that, oh not firewood. Firewood's not, not a fossil fuel. fuel. No, yeah. Firewood's not a fossil fuel. Firewood was part of that. Really? That's crazy. Uh, Is that I, asked, I asked yeah. the guy from uh, Montpelier Stoveworks middle of the month or a few months back I said uh, uh, what's going to happen when the state of Vermont outlaws firewood burning of firewood that's going <laughs> to it's not going to do the business out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I hadn't heard that I, yeah. I'm surprised at that hmm. because they want to they're you know the state is building all these biofuel places where they right. they're burning right. We promote so I, I don't advanced wood heating pretty heavily. Right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the the next one is the capital budgets, and this one is a lot less precise even than my estimations on the other one. So on the first page is the uh, uh, top of the page is the paving fund. Um, we're going to spend. That 135 plus 270, it might not exactly be in class three at 135 and class two at 270. There may be a little bit of mixing there. Uh, we got decent prices from uh, Whitcomb uh, because we've decided uh, for a variety of reasons not to change that culvert this year up on Blush Hill. We're not going to put the top, the second coat from Lonesome Trail out to um, the end of uh, the pavement on Blush Hill. So uh, we've done some uh, uh, shimming, resurfacing parts of Guptal Road. There's a couple of other places that we've done a little bit that we hadn't really intended to do. Uh, we may. <coughs> try to put a shim coat and level up going down to the ice center, especially in the narrow section there before you break out um, from the woods. Uh, that's pretty rough shape. Uh, we're trying to get a, uh, 
recalculated price on that. But we'll, if anything, we'll be a little bit low on the, the paving costs. Um, um, on Are you the, putting off the uh, uh, Blush Hill job until next year? Or? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the that culvert that's right in the dip the after Hall, you go, yeah. right, right in that area there, um, it's just been challenging to get people who were able to do the work and okay. to bid. And, uh, and there's been some other challenges just keeping up with things. So Woody came to me a couple months ago and said, really be better off if we try not to tackle that this year. So yeah. uh, we saved a little bit of, uh, rather than have the paving money just sit there, there were places that we could use it. So we uh -huh. went out and, and, and uh, got a little bit more done in some places that had some fairly significant needs in terms of rough road. Yep. On the Fund 71, the infrastructure program, that $200,000 state grant is um, that funds that downtown projects down in the expenses, you can see the first line in the expenses, $240, $240,000. The two forty dollars is for the sidewalks on Randall Street and um, Park Row, the, the Randall Street side of Park Row. Uh, we're going to come around the corner on Elm Street on, I think it's on Skip's side of yeah. Elm Street, come down and, and pick up a little bit more sidewalk there. And then the other part of that project was the lighting and uh, trash receptacles in Rusty Parker Memorial Park. Mm -hmm. The lighting and the trash receptacles are not going to happen in 2022. Uh, this grant is, uh, we, we've got until um, the end of the construction season in 2023 to get all of it done. So. My projection here is that we'll get 75% uh, uh, of the 200,000, so we'll probably get 150 there, and we'll spend 75% of the, of the project. And those are just estimates, just saying we're not going to get the whole $240,000 project done this year. Um, and then you can see that culvert improvement, that 62,000 was for the culvert on Blush Hill and we're not going to do that this year. Uh, the Reservoir Road project is going to go ahead. Um, they're pushing it off a little bit longer than I had hoped, but that's what the plan is right now. They're going to do it? They're going to, they're going to do it this year, yeah. Um, <laughs> About this time of year, is, I, I dread this time of year every yeah. year because the weather turns like Yeah, that. it's it's right. definitely a challenge, and you know, we're We've got the state the parks. Do it or you got a contractor? No, the Jay McDonald's is going to okay. do it. We put it out to bid. McDonald was the low bid. So they're, they're ready to go, and they, they should do a good job. But it's like Chris says, it's the, the weather they got to worry right. about. And you know, here we're trying to stabilize the road, and we've had yeah, a really dry which summer. Is already and, and now, right? you know, look at what's happening now. Yeah. So. Uh, it's going to be a challenge, but the state parks have been barking at us. Oh, you can't close the state the road into the state park, and blah blah blah. Oh, okay. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, vehicle fund, fund 72. That's pretty straightforward. Um, fire vehicles, nothing this year. So everything else is pretty much on the line. Uh, if you turn to the last page, the recreation CIP, uh, it wasn't a huge CIP in the first place, but looks like we're going to end up spending about a quarter of what we thought. Um, those projects, uh, recreation building through the tennis courts. The tennis court one is, is done. It costs less to put up the windscreens than we thought. But the field improvements and the rec building improvements, those were projects that uh, 
we need a lot of input from Nick and Bill Woodruff together and just given the circumstances with Nick deciding to move on, it just didn't, we weren't able to get that stuff uh, mm -hmm. ready to go. So, so anyway. We'll looking at those next year? Yeah, I imagine we'll, we'll have them still on the list to, to look at, yes. So I think we're in pretty decent shape I uh, haven't looked at the investment portfolio of late. Uh, if you've looked at your own, if you've looked at your own, it's relatively bad news. But uh, it's like a roller coaster. It's it's we've been kind of dollar cost averaging. You know, we had we had uh, come out of the market significantly in twenty early twenty and twenty twenty one. And um, we've been in several of the funds buying systematically, so I'm hoping that we're buying at a relatively low price. I mean, it still could go down from here. We don't know, but I think eventually we'll be rewarded for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so maybe at the next meeting, I'll bring you up to speed on what's happening with those. That'd be great. Any further questions from the board? Thank you, Bill, for the update. It's really, really good to hear where we are. Okay. Uh, and the last item is uh, the salary of town, town clerk and audit proposal. Yeah, so the audit proposal, uh, if you want to deal with that now, um, we, since 2000, since 2017, Sullivan and Powers is our audit, auditing firm. When Bill Yacoboni left, we put it out to bid. Um, Sullivan and Powers, uh, they were only one of, I can't remember if we had three. I think we only had two bidders. Um, and Sullivan and Powers got the bid. Uh, they gave us five years' worth of proposals. Um, 2021 was the last year that we were um, under contract with them for. Um, and pretty typically, an audit firm is looking at a five-year commitment. Uh, so because we had uh, come to the end of our time, uh, our contract in time with Sullivan and Powers, I reached out to Fred DuPlessis of their firm a couple weeks ago and said, can you give me a proposal for the next five years? I would recommend that you stay with Sullivan Powers right now um, for two reasons. One, um, they're a good firm. They know what they're doing. They know us. Uh, and in keeping with they know us, uh, I'm going to be transitioning out of here uh, in 2022 to 2023. Now, we haven't talked about it yet. Uh, we can talk about it when we get towards budget time, but my expectation is that you may want me to have some role because they're gonna come in May or June to do the 2022 audit, and they're gonna ask the town manager, and he's gonna say, I have no idea. <laughs> so um, I think that keeping them in play uh, is a good idea. Their prices, uh, we budgeted $25,000 uh, this year for their audit, and they, where is it? Audit, audit, professional audit. Commercial audit. So we budgeted twenty-five thousand in twenty twenty-two. The costs that they billed us was twenty-four thousand three hundred and forty dollars. They're proposing uh, twenty-five thousand dollars for next year to do the twenty twenty-two audit. So that will be the twenty twenty-three expense, and then it goes up twenty-five five. So up five hundred dollars for the next year. 
uh, and then 26.2, so that's uh, what $700 the next year. Then it goes up $800. Then it goes up uh, another $800 for the last two years. It's worse than property tax. <laughs> yeah. What's that? I said it's worse than property taxes. Well, and it impacts property taxes. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Um, so anyway. Um, my recommendation would be for you to accept this for the five-year term. Uh, if you don't want to accept it for the five-year term, then I'd have to, I really think you need to have them do this year's audit because changing auditors at the same time you're trying to get a new manager in is not a, a good idea. Um, if you told them, well, we'll commit to 2022 and then we want to go out to bid, I'm not sure you're going to get any prices that are going to be any lower than mm -hmm. the 25.5 that they're looking at. Is that was that schedule of increase the same as the last five years? Uh, um, I'd have to look, Roger. If you want to wait, I, I I told Fred today. This just came today, and I told him that it wasn't on the agenda today that it might be until October before the select board gets back. So if you want more information, you don't have to take any action tonight. You can wait until October to do this. They're not expecting it back tomorrow. The only thing I'm a little concerned of, you know, I understand why auditors want five-year contracts, but also we're going in, I think we have to be with the same auditor going into a, a, a new town manager. But at some point, might he wa want more of a, s a say or if he feels more comfortable with a certain auditing firm? I don't know. You can it's ask six them, moving, you know, you can ask them tomorrow. <laughs> right. And, and that's what we might want to, it might be a question if we do hire someone tomorrow, it might be a question for them if they haven't had any experience with Sullivan and Powers, how they feel about them, et cetera, et cetera. Do you recall if there was any upfront charge um, or additional charge when they first stepped through the door to kind of take over things from Bill? Or was it just, I don't recall if it was just a, a contract price of... Well, they made, they made a the proposal. Um, they just put a proposal together. It was a significant increase over what the economy was charging. So it was a huge increase. Um, so... It sounds like you have other questions, so we can table this until October. All right. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Now, I'd just be interested to see if that uh, those increases are in line with uh, what uh, we uh, what they what they charged through the last five years. We've taken together three percent of the total value of the contract, less of that. So I'm I don't want to minimize three thousand dollars of expense, but I also think in a five year one hundred twenty five thousand dollar contract, yeah. three thousand dollars of increases, I'm not deeply concerned about. But I'm happy to table it and get additional mm -hmm. information. I just think to the point we may end up no better, and I think it's imperative for next year. Um, and there is a. a cost to transition. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think we need to decide tonight, but I have no reservations with it as outlined. And in defense of Sullivan and Powers, we're seeing, they're seeing less and less auditors who are taking on new business. So we might be- Say so if we pay $25,000 this year and you're saying you're keeping within $1,000 for the next yeah, five years, not. that can be set for planning and they can't, they're right now 500 under budget. If they're done, I feel mm -hmm. okay about it. But we can wait. So I just want you to understand my comment was out of a bit of frustration that it just makes it, you know, every time you turn around and look at somebody, I haven't raised my prices on my equipment in five years, including this year, because I didn't want to participate in the economic destruction of my, you know, what I can do. I'm a, I'm a drop in a bucket, but uh, I refuse to. To, to raise my prices on my equipment. There's other things that I don't have control over. I have to pass those costs on, but um, it just every every turn, it's, right. it's an increase, an increase, an increase, and not only does it affect people who are looking to retire, uh, it also affects people who are, young people who are looking to try to buy their first home or try to get started or, you know what I'm saying? 
So mm -hmm. it's it's just. And Chris, I really deeply money. respect that. My grocery bill has gone up oh, faster yeah. than that. So the That's point being, true. if we're setting a contract for five years, yeah. I'm not saying I wish it wasn't like that, but I think being dealt the hand that we're dealt, oh, it might be about as good as we get. I uh, completely agree with that as well. Yep. Yep. Okay, I'll bring it back in October. Okay, thank you both. <coughs> thank you further, further for Bill. Do we need the clerk's salary? The clerk's salary? Clerk's salary. Yeah. Great time. <laughs> right. So, um, so the um, as I explained to Karen recently, uh, Karen and Carla before her um, are answerable to the public not to the select board, nor to the town manager. So you don't supervise her, I don't supervise her. She's, she runs her own ship right now. Um, but I did tell her that the one control that the select board has is the budget. So you have to put a budget together that shows what the clerk's salary is and if the clerk doesn't feel that's adequate, you know, if there's a discussion during the, the budget time, you know, she'll make her, her case and the select board can decide what it's going to put in the, in the uh, town report and what the proposed budget is going to be. And if she doesn't like it there, she can go to the voters and ask them to increase it. And if they do, they do. So it's a little bit odd in that, um, I don't, re there's not been a time in the 40 years that I've been doing this that we've had a town clerk transition during the year. It usually happens that the, the exiting town clerk decides not to run again. We kind of know that there's a budget made. So um, Karen and I have talked and my recommendation to the select board is that Karen's annualized salary be $58,240 a year. And if you divide that by 2,080 hours, it's $28 an hour, which is less than the former town clerk was making, but more than she was making as utility billing clerk. So it's a formality, I hope. You, you have this one right now, even though she doesn't work for you, you know, you have the control of the purse. So if you agree to $28 an hour, she'll be happy enough to come to work tomorrow. <laughs> What's your pleasure? I'll move that we approve uh, the salary of $58,240. I'll second. We have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> there being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Congratulations, Carrie. Thank, Thank you. Happy to have you on board. Yes. Um, are you getting yeah. ready to adjourn? Yeah. We will. All right. So before you adjourn, the next meeting is Monday, September 19th. Um, uh, I would encourage you to meet that day if you'd like. Maybe you have something to do after tomorrow with the town manager search committee. But on the 19th of September, I will be in Columbus, Ohio at my final International City Management Association conference. So I won't be here on the 19th of September. Um, so if you don't want to meet on the 19th, the next meeting would be on October 3rd. And it's up to the board. I mean, I'm just letting you know I won't be here for it. So, I would encourage us to keep on key. And we have a lot of things on our agenda. I know we missed one meeting, and there's stuff in the parking lot that you know we could always, you know, some of those things we could tackle a little bit. Mm -hmm. well, what's everyone else's thought? Yeah, we took off uh, a meeting at the beginning of August. Uh, it seems like we have. We continue to add things to par to the parking lot, but we haven't taken much out of it. Uh, so I would say let's uh, try to uh, meet on the 19th. Yep. 
Okay. Um, do you want me to try to get the state police folks on the 19th, or do you want me here for that meeting, or? Um, yeah, I might want you there for if we can do that on the 3rd of October. All right. Oh, that works See for everyone else. I agree with that. I think we should have Bill here for the state yeah. police meeting. Because one of the things I'm interested in is the interplay between the town manager and, and the state police in terms of how they prioritize their duties and that sort of thing. Okay. Great. But uh, perhaps some of these others. Uh, Yeah, so we can I skip discuss the sewer system? I bet Bill is well versed oh, in the right. sewer system. Yeah, so that could not, be uh, perhaps discuss a discuss the sewer system. Skip Bill skip back. And perhaps I would also just propose at that meeting we have a subject around future agenda items because I currently have a half page with Guptal Parking, Parking Ordinance, ARPA, right. Housing, Emergency Management Plan, Dan Suite Assessor Presentation, Audit Report, Vermont State Police Sewer System. So yes, I agree. I think whatever we can check off and recognizing many of those would be aided by Bill's presence and expertise, but maybe let's try for Skip at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan speaks on vacation then too, just so yeah. Thank you. How well, about your, uh, the housing? Uh, yeah, I was, I can come back with the, we can do yeah. finalization of the task force yeah. um, and maybe invite some friends. Maybe we can one-on-one, -on -one, maybe say what are our priorities among each other and what we could do for the next meeting. And I think the point that we might have um, other follow-up about uh, right. prospective future manager, depending on tomorrow's outcomes, right. is point well point. taken. Yeah. Or other committee updates. I mean, I'm sure you could get the planning commission to talk about zoning if you all want to do that as a separate matter. But okay. I'm sure they'd be delighted. Thanks. Anything further that could legally come before us? If not, someone want to make a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Second. Here's a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>